Adele lives in Kildare with her husband Brian and their two daughters. And the MasterChef experience has proved to be an adventure that she was more than ready to take on. For me, I think at this stage, I've been at home with the kids for three and a half, four years now. So choosing to go back to work is a big thing. And then when you're taking yourself away from your children, you want to make sure that it's something you really love. So MasterChef has been, it's been kind of the, the start, I suppose, the kickstart to that. And, you know, Brian was making fun of me the other night. And he said, you know, you couldn't just go and get a job. Like, you couldn't just go and interview for something. You had to go and do MasterChef. So, um, but I suppose that's me. Like, it's an all or nothing type thing, you know. So. It just seemed right. I mean, you can always find reasons why you can't do things because you're busy and your life is hectic. And, but I, I think it was just, uh, couldn't, couldn't let this opportunity pass. You're seeing how much she loves food, how, how much she loves uh, getting it right. It kind of feels like right place and right time for me at the moment. Hungarian-born Diana lives in Court McSherry, where her boyfriend Mike grew up. They both work in the hospitality industry and have a shared passion for food and all things West Cork. It's not so different from being in a child in Hungary. It's it's very similar idea, the nature and quiet and peaceful and fresh air. It's a very rural place, so everybody knows each other, everybody salutes on the road, and I, I love this. To win MasterChef would be just an absolute... Um, really a, a, a platform to start up our own uh, little business down here and finally we could do what we really want to do with our talents and with our experience and our, our passion. It would mean everything to her to win and she's able for it and she has so much passion about it. Once she explains a dish, she can, almost can see it in front of you, you know. Cheers for the MasterChef dream. To the final. I will okay. give it my best shot and I will put my heart on the plate and I feel deep down inside I have a lot more to give still. So um, I'm gonna show that in the final. Home for Neve is County Ross Common on the farm with her husband Adrian and their three children. I think that if I hadn't been a mother, I wouldn't have necessarily applied for MasterChef because it's very important to me that my children have certain values in life. One, that you don't quit at things and you take a risk, but also that don't be afraid to stand out from the crowd. Being a MasterChef, they're going to see their mammy on the telly doing lots of very strange things. I'm sure they'll be as embarrassed as anything. I also think they'll be very proud, but I think there's so many things that they will see that I went through and I think they will bring that forward in their lives. Her first passion has always been cookery. Now she's in the final and we're very proud of her. And it's just been one incredible journey for her. Is this like MasterChef to you? It is, but it's not stressful. OK, you can be Nick. But for Adele, Diana and Neve, the quest to win MasterChef begins far from home on a new continent. The last time I was on African soil was when I was about seven, eight years old and we were coming back to Ireland. I've always wanted to go back, but I never had the opportunity. And now I am, as part of the MasterChef final. And I'm thrilled beyond belief. Over the next 48 hours, Neve, Diana and Adele will experience the diverse and exotic cuisine of South Africa, beginning in Franchuk, at a restaurant highly regarded all over the world, the Tasting Room. First impressions of South Africa High peaks, blue skies, it was just amazing, really. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the tasting room. This is South Africa's most celebrated fine dining restaurant. The tasting room is named the 53rd best restaurant in the San Pellegrino Guide. It is home to an award-winning chef and her unique African-inspired tasting menu. Ladies, Maho Yansa. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our beautiful French hook. Today I'd like to take you on a journey into my world and introduce you to our amazing, inspiring and indigenous ingredients. Okay guys, so you're gonna take all that you learned from Marho this morning and create a dish of your own that you will present to the three of us. The very best of luck. Thank you. 
We were really excited when we pulled up outside and we realised where we were and that we'd be meeting Margot. And I suppose it's quite special for us to meet a female chef. So um, that's quite exciting. And we've all heard about the restaurant and we know about her food. So we'll learn a lot today, I think. I think in South Africa there are so many different cultures that it's very difficult to say what is typical South African food. I, I was 20 when I left Holland and when I came here, I think I looked at things with different eyes than if you grow up here. And for me, South African food is determined by the ingredients. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you. I believe what we have here is extremely special. I believe to complete the picture of our beautiful country and the amazing people, I think you need to eat uh, what's from here. And so I, uh, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce you to all of this and then uh, you can choose um, some of these ingredients uh, to cook with, clearly. I never went to culinary school, so I've really sort of followed my own path with lots of mentors, lots of traveling, lots of research. And more and more, I came across things here that I'd never seen before. Wow. You get a certain waft of us, yeah. It can be quite overpowering very quickly, but it's also great with fruit, it's great with chocolate. I think the contestants have, on the one hand, an amazing task today, but also daunting. This is African garlic. And when I open it, you'll understand why it's closed. Ooh. It's going to be tricky <laughs> to cook with things that you have never cooked with. I mean, you can taste it quickly, but what happens when you apply heat or when you start cooking and, or blending? You know, it's, it's going to be very interesting. I had a really good feeling of Marco. She's a lovely person. She's a self-taught chef, which is uh, making me believe that one day I could be uh, somebody like her. Wow. It's got a fragrance, it's got a smell. The food in Africa has got soul, you know? I really hope they're gonna try and cook some of the things that intrigue them. And I think as a chef, you have to be daring. It must be a little bit daunting because a lot of it you don't know. I don't know what to do with it, really. But you must have a pretty decent knowledge of food if the three of you are standing here. So it's you about following so. your instinct. Yeah. Yeah. I also didn't know. Good luck. In this two-hour challenge, the finalists are working in new surroundings with many unfamiliar ingredients. All they have to rely on are their palates and the instinct that has brought them this far in the competition. They're not the final three for nothing. Yep. Now it's trusting your intuition. There's something on the line today, so... A lot so on they, the line Yeah, so they must do something. If you go just safe, that's not what I'm looking for. It's a mountain for a professional alone, but for an amateur, it's... it's no, I've been thinking. I'm, I'm actually quite glad I'm not in their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't cooked any of these things before, so I, I'm not confident at all. We're going to have to rely on our own sense of judgment and who we are really as cooks. You think that you know so much, but <laughs> you realize when you come across ingredients that you never actually tasted before that you just have to take it slow and take it easy and, and just keep tasting them and figure out what combination would go well. So that's what I'm doing. So Adele. Yes. Tell us. I took the uh, the unpronounceable fish. Cabalio. Cabalio. So I took that and some corn. So I um, I'm going to make a polenta. Right. Um, I have some things that I've tasted and I think will work with it, but I don't know the names of. Buchu. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do that. I thought I might be brave and put it in the stock first and then remove it and use that to cook the polenta just to, so it's not too overpowering because I don't want to, to kill the lovely fish. Well, good luck, Adele. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good you sound like you think I really need it. <laughs> What meat have you chosen? Say again. Uh, this is the loin of the, sorry now, the heart beast. Yeah, beast. Heart beast. Heart beast. Heart beast. Yeah. So, okay, so tell us what you've got in the bag. It's uh, basically onions, leeks, some carrots. So what I'm going to try to do is to add liquid to it. And right. I vacuum pack it and I leave it alone for marinating a little while. I'm going to slice it thin. I'm going to make um, a white risotto. I'm uh, hoping that it's something, something like uh, venison, like lean and gamey. Right. It's very exciting. 
I'm just uh, trying to use the instinct or what I actually have in my mind. Yeah. And then I go with the little wild choices as well, you know. Fresh, wild ingredients are commonplace in this kitchen, but the challenge is for the finalists to show that they have the skills to adapt to any culinary environment. Hi, Neve. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. So, uh, tell us, what have you uh, chosen? I've chosen the wildebeest, and I want to treat it quite carefully. I want to keep the what I imagine is quite a subtle taste to still come through, so I'm not going to faff around with it too much, and I am completely intrigued by this. So, I don't know how you treat it. I think oh, yeah, pan fry it gently. Um, I've never cooked with it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the plant. It's off the of table. The, it's, it's off the, the table. It's the plant of the, the restaurant. And there was a nice sort of house plant there as decoration. <laughs> and of course, I ate the leaves and went, I could make an interesting vegetable out of this. This is safe to eat. Trimble. You will let us know in about 20 minutes, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> it could have tasted good. <laughs> In spite of Neve mistaking the decorations for garnish, our three finalists have managed to convince the judges that they will find their way through this challenge. I can see them all using instinct. Yeah. And they all do have a good cooking instinct, there's no doubt. I think if you are presented with ingredients that you've never cooked with, I think you have to start with an idea and constantly assess and adjust, assess and adjust, yeah. assess and adjust, and what you end up with could be completely different than what your initial idea is. It's baby steps. Yeah. The MasterChef final is underway. From now on, every single detail is crucial. I'm feeling like I should be nervous, but then, like any time in the competition where I've trusted my gut instinct, it's when I got really great comments. So I'm thinking if that's what they like, if they like what I do and what's natural to me, well then that's what I have to keep going with. As the Taste of Africa challenge enters the last 15 minutes, any mistake now could spell disaster for these amateur cooks. I want to actually see if someone who's essentially a home cook is able to be adventurous when suddenly presented with strange ingredients. It's a challenge to myself as much as a competition against other people. I'm nervous about cooking for her. She will know if it's a minute overcooked or if it's a minute under, but I'm just trying to infuse as much flavor and uh, give a bit of myself in the dish, so 